SCP-1847 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Due to the unique nature of SCP-1847, containment protocols are to be enacted in response to manifestations as they occur. No female personnel are permitted involvement in the containment protocols for SCP-1847 at any time. All public flight manifests inbound to England, United Kingdom are to be monitored and recorded. Should the name William Whitward appear on any passenger listing, personnel are to be deployed to said flight and observe the individual under the guise of flight attendants. If the subject is determined to be a manifestation of SCP-1847, said agents are to alert Mobile Task Force Delta-22 gentlemen to the situation. MTF Delta-22 is to apprehend SCP-1847 upon landing, and all passengers-slash-airline staff involved in the incident are to be administered Class A amnestics. Standard media blackout procedures are to be followed. SCP-1847 is then to be transferred to the nearest practicable secure site. Manifestations of SCP-1847 are to be housed in a humanoid containment cell, and all interaction with the entity is to be conducted through male personnel. SCP-1847 is to remain under video and audio surveillance constantly, and any change in its behavior is to be reported to a level 3 or higher personnel immediately. SCP-1847-1 is not to be removed from SCP-1847 at any time. If SCP-1847 disappears, the containment supervisor is to notify personnel involved in the public monitoring of the phenomenon immediately. Lethal force is not to be used against SCP-1847 at any time. Should SCP-1847 die, containment personnel are to monitor all outbound flights from England for a minimum of one month. Should the name William Whitward appear on any such flight, the containment protocols listed above are to be enacted. Description SCP-1847 is a humanoid entity a Caucasian male in its mid-thirties self-identifying as William Whitward. The entity's appearance is consistent between manifestations, sporting green eyes, light brown medium-length hair, and a lean build of 73 to 78 kilograms, with a height of 174 centimeters. Its clothing consists of black tie formal evening wear, with a wool polyester jacket and silk shirt. SCP-1847 is generally evasive regarding personal details when communicating with non-females, though consistent information obtained regarding these facets of the entity are as follows. It claims to be on a business trip from the United States. It claims not to be married or dating. It claims to have no living family. It claims to be significantly affluent. SCP-1847 possesses an innate cognitive property affecting certain female individuals exposed to it. Said individuals will find SCP-1847 unnaturally physically attractive, regardless of the individual's aesthetic interests. This effect will increase in intensity continuously as the elapsed duration of exposure to SCP-1847 increases. While SCP-1847 has been thoroughly searched prior to and during containment, and all searches thus far have produced no items or accessories on its being, the entity has been documented to produce several objects on various occasions, including a phone, black and unknown make and model, a leather wallet complete with personal identification and currency, a set of keys, an ornate dagger with a ruby-encrusted golden hilt, designated SCP-1847-1. An airplane ticket and passport. The wallet and passport confirm that SCP-1847's name is William Whitward. It is 35 years old and originates from Data Redacted USA. The keys and phone have not been recovered for analysis. 
SCP-1847-1 has been recovered, but no analysis is as of yet possible, as forcibly removing SCP-1847-1 from SCP-1847's care will cause the entity to prematurely disappear within three minutes of removal. Any item or accessory that has been removed from SCP-1847 will disappear simultaneously with the entity. SCP-1847 will manifest on public aircraft inbound to England. The exact point of manifestation appears to occur during the boarding process, though individuals exposed to SCP-1847 during this phase will be unable to remember the precise point of the entity's appearance. SCP-1847 does not travel with any luggage, carry-on or otherwise. Upon landing, SCP-1847 will immediately seek out an unmarried female aged between 27 and 34 years and begin to court her. Due to SCP-1847's properties, the individual will enthusiastically reciprocate SCP-1847's advances, culminating in sexual intercourse. Upon completion of the sex act, SCP-1847 will produce SCP-1847-1 and murder the victim, always resulting through cardiac impalement. Upon death, the body will rapidly disintegrate, producing an item of jewelry which is collected by SCP-1847. SCP-1847 will repeat this process until it has collected five items, at which point it will immediately disappear. The items are always the same and collected in the same order. A ring, a bracelet, two earrings acquired separately, and a necklace, all crafted from gold and embedded with rubies. If SCP-1847 is confined and unable to perform its activities, it will disappear within 4 to 16 weeks of initial capture. No methods have proven viable in preventing this occurrence. Intervals between SCP-1847 manifestations can be as short as 2 weeks or as long as 18 months. SCP-1847 is mortal, though its death will not prevent further manifestations and termination is ill-advised. Should SCP-1847 die, its body will disappear and a new manifestation will occur within 2 to 4 weeks, though this will occur on a public flight outbound from England. After landing, SCP-1847 will proceed with the above-mentioned activities as normal. Addendum 1847-001 Interview with SCP-1847 during containment at Site-117 Why did you kill those women? I haven't killed anyone. Were you not traveling to England to murder five women? I haven't killed anyone. According to our records, you've killed <coughs> women in England. And I've never been to England before. I've never been outside of the United States before. Why were you heading to London? For business. You were not intending to seduce and stab five women to death with a dagger. What is the last thing you did before planning this trip? I went to an auction. An auction? Held by whom? You expect me to remember the name? It was in- Data. Redacted. Wait. I think I have- Yes. This. Son of a bitch! What? Why did you plan the trip? It told me to. What did? Data. Expunged. What? Data. Expunged. The dagger. Why did it tell you this? I like being beautiful. Reconnaissance in Data Redacted confirmed that a Marshall, Carter, and Dark exhibition took place on 2000. Among the items detailed in this event was the following. Item A magnificent ornate dagger measuring 27 centimeters in length. The hilt is crafted from 10 karat gold and adorned with 10 rubies. This blade will bestow its wielder with its unearthly beauty and lead them to further riches eternally. Price? The sum of your life. 
Addendum 1847-002 on 2000. At 7.08 p.m., SCP-1847 withdrew a phone from its clothing while in containment. SCP-1847 proceeded to communicate to an unknown individual through the device for 1 minute and 29 seconds. The voice originating from the phone's speaker was undetectable. No signal was detected entering or exiting SCP-1847's chamber. Hello? Hi, dear. No, that's not. Will you just listen to me for a second? We've been through this before. There's no one, I just... Calm down, honey. Calm down. Yes, I promise. Yes. Yes. No, just tell the kids. Yes, that. Good. No, but I'm going to bring you something special. It's a surprise. Oh, it'll look beautiful on you. Yes. I love you too. Two months after this incident, Foundation personnel managed to locate the residence of William Whitward in Data Redacted USA. The estate, along with reportedly all of Whitward's belongings, were then in the possession of Marshall Carter and Dark, having been obtained through the terms of purchasing SCP-1847-1. Through an agreement with MCD, Foundation personnel have been allowed to search the premises and maintain observation of the location. During the initial exploration, three sets of human remains were discovered, buried one meter beneath a dirt floor in the cellar. The remains included one adult female, one adolescent male, and one prepubescent female, all displaying evidence of multiple impalement. <laughs>